In this video, I will talk about the first project in Pintos that we're going to be working on, which is the user prog project. Um, the purpose of this project is to um, support running of user programs. So what does it take? To support user programs um, so in a nutshell the steps that we need to do uh, to make user programs possible are first we have to provide um, this is not the exact order but we have to provide file system access so so we have our operating system and we have application programs these are user programs what we will see is our user programs are their primary job is to is to accomplish whatever they do which is uh, uh, let's say they access some files uh, manipulate some create other child processes um, man, um, print something onto the screen um, most of what they do involve accessing operating system services through system calls. They perform system calls and they get responses back. So, so one of the most common things that they do is, uh, is, to, is to access files on a disk. So we have a disk, um, they have a file system, and um, the user programs access files on the disk. We don't allow user programs to directly access files, so we provide that access through a bunch of system calls. The, pro the system calls uh, that we provide are either file sys related calls or process related calls. The file sys related calls are calls like uh, open, we'll list them in, in all great detail, open, uh, read, write and so on close and so on process related calls are to create and manage processes so primarily exec a process wait for a process and uh, uh, exit a process this will be the main main things we will look at so so processes for us are going to be primarily implemented um, by this notion of of what we call as kernel threads so we manage processes management of processes which are which are really implemented are uh, implemented using the kernel a kernel thread um, uh, require that we should be able to uh, execute a process again uh, we should be able to uh, uh, wait for an, a, a child process. Uh, we should process. We should do a termination of a process through exit. These are these are these are uh, at inside handled inside the operating system, and these are calls made from the from above. Set up an address space for each process. We'll talk about these two in just a second. Um, but in order to understand these two these two points. We first have to understand some basics. So the basic idea uh, first is that uh, that that we have to get a grasp of is this is notion of uh, the virtual address space. So all programs uh, when they run, we think of them as having a having their virtual address space viewed this way. So uh, uh, so just in a nutshell, our virtual address is a 32-bit is a address. Of which there are uh, 12 bits that make up our offset. And the remaining 20 bits make up our what is called a virtual page number. So, so you can view our, our 
this this is a view where our virtual address space is thought of as being broken into fixed size uh, chunks if you will called pages and each page is of size 4 kilobytes that's where the offset is is of 12 bits comes from so so our address space um, is if you think of it from a from a paging standpoint it's broken up into fixed size pages like we said before so the code might be actually broken up into several pages for example what you will notice is this is the first page at 48804800 because that's a 12 bit address this is the first page in our code so the next page will be at 0x 0804900 so that will be the next page and so on so if the if assuming that the code is made up of uh, four pages then the next one will be at a a000 and the next one will be at a b000 and so each of these each of these pages now one two three four each of these is of size 4 kb so that's 4 kb there's another 4 kb another 4 kb and so on so the address space of a program can be thought of as mainly divided into the code region the heap region which is this for now we will think of all of this as heap we'll worry about this later and the stack region So every program uh, has has in a, in a sense access to addresses from 0x000 all the way up to 0x FFFFFFFF. However, uh, the the region of memory that it it is mapped onto its inside its address space um, is some of it is user space. So everything from here to here is user space and everything from here to here is kernel space. That is all programs uh, map the kernel um, as part of their address space. And the cutoff point between the user space and the kernel space is in Pintos is called the fizz base. The fizz base, which is actually a defined uh, boundary is at 0xc000 this is going to be very important to us because what we will we will we will kind of see is when the when the stack is empty and an empty stack um, the register that is the stack pointer will be esp esp will have a value of a 0xc000000 and as we keep adding elements to the stack the stack grows that way. All this, what all this translates to for us is, uh, as a program is one when the program is loaded in physical memory. So this is our physical memory. Our physical memory has some part of it has the operating system residing in it and and these these pages of a program are loaded into memory and um, as we will see um, the rest of the memory uh, physical address space is divided into what we ca call as a kernel pool and the user pool in pintos so this part of the OS has so uh, this part of the OS really is has a one to one mapping with this part of the of the user space. So they're identical. So every program as part of its address space maps the operating system into its address space. So so the mapping itself is provided by this table called the page table, the page table, which is a per 
process structure table if you will what it contains and i'm just going to take a simple example what it has within it um, is uh, is mainly two pieces of index information the index into this table is the page number the vpn and inside it there will be what is called the uh, frame number the physical uh, frame number and uh, and some flags and we'll worry about these flags in just a second but um, these flags for us uh, there's there's several flags that that x86 maintains for now the only flag we're going to be worrying about is a flag uh, called the pbit um, so let's make that the pbit So let's look at how this, how the, how the table is organized. Um, so I'm going to make this slightly different. Let's call this, there are many flags here, but the flag of interest to us for right, right now is a 